Hey guys, welcome to Art. My name is Mr. Colson. Today we're going to be learning about Atmospheric Perspective. Let's go! Hey guys, uh, so right, today we're going to be talking about how to add atmospheric perspective into a drawing and we're also going to talk about how to use tints and shades of a color. Um, now let's start with atmospheric perspective. We've been working to create depth in our pictures at Rocky Creek and we do that in three ways. We use size, overlapping, and position. Size, when, when things are really far away they look smaller. Are they actually smaller? No, they're not, but they do look smaller. And uh, as things are farther away, sometimes there are other things in front of them, and we call that overlapping. In general, if things are higher up the page, they look farther away, so the position on the page matters. But today we're going to be talking about another way to create depth, and that is through atmospheric perspective. Can you say that word again, atmospheric perspective? Thank you, Molly, and I hope you guys said it as well. So let me show you some examples of atmospheric perspective um, in some photos and other people's art. So what we see here is we have a, a really dark uh, hill in front of us with lots of detail, and you can see little trees popping up. And then, look, the uh, colors get lighter and lighter as they go up the page, and to, so it's almost white as it goes all the way up. This one is very similar as well. I like to see this one because look how beautiful the overlaps are. You can see how these hills are overlapping left and right, and that's a very natural way to draw, so we're going to try that as well. Um, I wanted to show this one because you can see these mountains pretty clearly in the background, but if you look very closely, they are slightly faded, and as they get even higher up, these back here are really faded, almost like clouds. This is another example similar to the, the ones before. And then I wanted to show one where it seemingly had no atmospheric perspective at all because a lot of people might argue, well, atmospheric perspective is only when it's really cloudy. And that's kind of true. Like, you need to be looking through a lot of atmosphere for it to happen. So things need to be really far away. And it's the only mountain that you see, so you don't see multiple ranges. So it's harder to see it. Now, this project is really interesting to me. This is an art project um, done at a high school. They took some works done by Friedrich uh, Caspar David Friedrich, which was an artist in the Romance period back in the late 1700s, early 1800s. Wow. Pretty intense looking character, isn't he? That is Friedrich. But what, let me show you some of his work. So this work is one of his, and he did some atmospheric perspective there. See how things get lighter as they go up the page? And then this is one of his works, lots of atmospheric perspective. You don't see mountains overlapping, but he still made the the plane or this field kind of get lighter and lighter as it goes up. And uh, this is another one of his. So what they did was in this piece they traced his work and then they added uh, tints and shades of blue to, to exaggerate the atmospheric perspective being used. What we're going to do is we're going to create our own scene with atmospheric perspective in our books. So I want you to open up your sketchbook you can see this is where we're going. I like to show you, we need to begin with the end in mind, right? That's what successful people do. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a black colored pencil to create a really dark foreground or the lowest part of the page. And then we're going to create some overlapping mountains and we're going to get lighter and lighter. So the first thing you want, you need is a black colored pencil. And uh, you're going to draw the bottom layer of our mountains or the first mountain, the bottom layer. Now this one can be kind of uh, detailed because this is the one that's closest to us so you might want to add some little extra bumps and you know kind of make it look like a rock is here or something like that so we're going to draw up the page like that and it doesn't have to be diagonal it could be straight it could be a bump in the middle it doesn't matter as long as you have these layers of mountains okay molly has started her her drawing and it looks really good so far create some more layers of our mountain here now 
I'm using black, but now I'm going to switch to another color. You know what? I'm going to do purple again because purple is Rocky Creek colors. And plus, it's really beautiful. Have you ever heard the song, Oh, Purple Mountain's Majesty? Now, this one doesn't have to be quite as detailed. It's a little bit farther away. So I'm going to draw this mountain going like this. Maybe add a little waviness to it. And uh, you could draw it in the same direction. It doesn't matter. I like to kind of crisscross them because it makes them look like they're overlapping more naturally. So the next one uh, is going to be, I'm going to do again with purple. And then the last one, I'm, I'm going to make the last one a little more uh, obtuse mountain, like way up in the background, maybe one or two. Uh, I mean, you know what, I may even do actually another one here, just a real big one. So it doesn't matter how many you do. I wouldn't do more than uh, four or five because you're going to have to create many, many different tints and shades of colors. So now's a good opportunity to talk about tints and shades of color for just a second. Um, what is a tint and a shade of a color? Well, a tint of a color is when you add white to a color, and so you make it lighter. And that's how you get light purple, like I'm going to create light blue or sky blue. When you add white to red, what do you get? Pink. pink. Not light red, you get pink. I mean, I guess you could call it light red if you wanted to. A uh, light green, uh, and then you're going to get lighter and lighter as we go up the page. Now when you add black to a color, you create shades of that color. When I teach this lesson, I always find that students uh, think that a, a tint of a color is a, a that, that color and add black to it or make it darker. And the reason why is because they think about tinted windows. Have you ever heard that? Tinted windows? If you have tinted windows in your car, it means that the windows are darker. Well, art teachers, we hate that because when you say that the window's been tinted, it should look even lighter. Because a tint, when you add a tint to something, it looks lighter. So they should call it shaded windows. Have you ever thought about that? So when you add black to a color, you're creating the shade of that color. If you add black to red, do you know what color you get? Crimson. That's right, crimson. Now this part down here, I want to make black. But before I do that, I want to draw some really cool design here. I want to draw like a tree sticking up. Um, you don't have to do the same kind of tree as me. But I'm going to show you a cool way to draw a tree. Okay, so I'm going to take my uh, black and I'm going to draw a tree. And um, I'm going to add a trunk here. Now trees, they get, they're a little thicker at the bottom and they get skinny as they go up the page. And, uh, you know, there's lots of trees you could draw. You could draw like a dead tree where it just shows the limbs. Um, this time I'm actually going to draw like a fir tree or evergreen. So I'm going to start with little triangles at the top and just add some triangles as I come down and I'm kind of flaring this way over here this way over here and as I get to the middle I'm doing like this so I'm just kind of making it a big triangle and then every once in a while I'll start over so that I have these little overhangs whoa it's a big dark tree okay uh, I'm gonna do two trees I'm gonna do another. I'm gonna overlap my trees. So I'm gonna draw a tree that's a little bit smaller and higher up the page, and I'm going to make it slightly behind this tree. Well, that was fun. I'm covering up a lot of my mountains with these trees, but um, that's okay. So then down here, I'm gonna color this part in black as well. But what I'd like for you to do for this exercise is just use one color for the whole page. Um, black doesn't count as a color, but use one color to do all of your tints. Now notice I'm going side to side. I think it's good to go side to side when you're doing landscapes for mostly everything. The water, the sky, and the grass. And the reason why is because your eye sees in layers. You know, this is closer, this is farther away, this is farther away, this is farther away. So we kind of see layers of texture going side to side. If you go up and down and diagonal, it's not going to look quite as natural. Okay, and that felt like magic. I always wish that I could um, do that in art class when you guys are in class, that I could just fast forward things. And, uh, you know, that way I don't 
just have to have teacher examples all the time. I could do them right in class like this. Now I'm going to take my um, purple, or you can use whatever color you want, and I'm going to draw or color in the first mountain here. And I can still see my mountain was right here. So this mountain right here is going to be the darkest purple that I can get. You know, I guess you could have done the trees after the mountains. I've done that before too. And I can't believe I drew these trees so big. They're taking up too much of the page. I could have drawn them off to the side. So we didn't have two black colored pencils. So Molly is painting the bottom of hers. And she's going super, super black. Or trying to. It almost looked like brown at first, but now she's realizing that less water makes it get darker. I want this to be the darkest layer of purple. What can I do to make this per this layer even darker? But you know what? If you want to, you could blend some black into here. So I'm going to take my black colored pencil and I'm going to add some black to this. Okay. So the next step is I'm going to draw with a little bit lighter purple. Um, but since I added black down here, I can go pretty dark because it won't be quite as black as this one. And that's this mountain that I drew right here. Okay, so now I have my darkest layer. Now I have my purple. I think this is my next layer here. I may have skipped. I think this was two layers. I did one there. I think I did one there and then one there. But, I mean, I kind of can't see them now. So I did this as my first purple, my darkest purple. And then this is a little bit lighter purple. And now I'm going to go even lighter here. So a really light purple here. So if you're trying to paint this with watercolors, um, what you're going to want to do is use more water as you go up the page and just have less paint on your brush. And I'll show you guys that. But I know not everybody has watercolors. And then for the very top mountain here, I'm going to do the lightest purple that I could possibly draw and still be able to see it. So that's my lightest purple there. Okay, so I've created atmospheric perspective by drawing with black and then dark purple and then purple and then a light purple and then really light purple going up the page and then if I wanted to add some purple haze to my sky I could do that but um, I'm just gonna leave it pretty much white there okay so Molly's gonna paint the whole thing and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to get darker or to stay dark and then get lighter and lighter as you paint higher on the page. So now we've got a really dark purple here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use like less layers of purple. So as you go up the page, you're going to still get water on your brush and purple here. And then you're just going to do one quick layer. And if it's too dark, you can just t get nothing but water. Always wet your brush though now and get because um, you don't want to get too dark. So Molly's going to finish this. I think we could go even darker here with the purple and then, you know, have that one even lighter. Um, I would like for you to use one color for this. I walked away to go help m uh, my son Liam with something and Molly switched colors on me, which it turned out really beautiful. But for this project, I would like for you to try to stick with one color when you start over adding the tints and shades to your mountains uh, so that I can see clearly. Atmospheric perspective. Full of artists, we gotta create some things. We got art to draw me.